Um, you think about fun things that one could do with a computer algebra system. Um, it, it, it's a, I think um, the kind of thing that where computer algebra system really does extend your ability beyond what one could reasonably do in physics for a by hand with uh, what you've learned in calculus one and two. Um, it's uh, differential equations because it, um, so many of laws of physics are stated in uh, differential equation form. And once we start dealing with the oscillation and waves and equations of motion, that's when you can't really get away from the fact that, um, that you need a whole mathematical um, mechanics, the uh, calculational tools of differential equations to fully uh, hash out uh, what these laws of physics tell you and what their consequences are what their consequences are. And you see me do, do, do this with the oscillations, simple harmonic oscillator, damped oscillations. And last time I think I did this with a driven uh, simple harmonic oscillator. Um, and uh, it's all fun. And it's, uh, once you have access to computer algebra system, learn a little bit of how they work, it's relatively easy to do. And I encourage you to play with it. Um, now what I want to do is I want to do this application in the waves context. And I will tell you there's a bit of a challenge here. And the challenge here is that when you are in the waves context, let me see here, I've done the, I think it's here. Uh, I've done the derivation of wave equation and kind of gotten to the equation of motion for waves. Uh, I gotta skip to the part where it is. Um, yeah, so that's a, our equation of motion for waves. And you see some of the symbols look different. And uh, so this, this weird looking thing, it looks kind of like a D, but it's not. It's not even delta because in most uh, typography, in the uh, usual way things are written. So let me give you three different letters that you will see in printed form. The letter D, you already know that. And uh, the Greek letter delta and the most common way delta, lowercase delta is written is in this way. This thing here, um, it, it's got a whole different thing. Uh, it looks like this. And in LaTeX where a lot of mathematical typesetting is done, um, this actually have a different command. It says uh, the backslash or slash thing, partial. Because uh, this is the letter that we use when we uh, indicate partial derivatives. And you know this would be just the lowercase delta. Uh, this would be just the D. There's no command for it. Um, so, so this uh, differential equation, it involves partial derivatives. And most of the times when I introduce a partial derivatives, I tell you, oh, it's even simpler than regular derivatives. Because when you take partial derivatives, like a partial derivative with respect to x, you have this function f that's a function of, oh, you can't really see it. Um, let me just uh, trace over this so that you can uh, read what it's meant to be. It's a function of uh, position and time and when you take a partial derivatives, you ignore one of those things that it's a function of. You just treat it like a constant. So when you do partial derivative with respect to x, you ignore time t uh, as a variable, and same thing here. Uh, so normally I tell you it's super simple. It's not scary. Um, what I will tell you is that um, it is in fact scary. Uh, there's a whole world of difference between what we call ordinary differential equations, ODE, and what we call partial differential equations, PDE. Uh, last time you've seen me solve ordinary differential equations using this tool. All I, all I had to really know was know a function called uh, DSOLVE, differential equation solve. Um, it says solve a first or second order linear ODE including something something <laughs> initial variable problem and boundary variable problem i think uh, like i like there's a function that does everything i wanted to but it says ode not pde 
That's because um, solving PDE, it's a, it's a per division material. Um, I, I, I don't know if I know how to solve a single uh, class of PDEs by hand. <laughs> I've taken an upper division course on differential equations and it covered partial differential equations, but I was I was much better physics major than math major, so I forgot a lot of it. <laughs> so um, so this is the scary thing about PDE. It's uh, a lot harder to solve. So uh, you might be asking now, so why are we talking about this uh, if we don't have anything in our computerized the tool to help deal with the partial differential equation. Like, so we are stuck. There's nothing more we can do. Uh, so here's uh, what we can do. Uh, we can come up with a class of solution where we take something that is a partial differential equation and rewrite it into a set of ordinary differential equation. And it's a mathematical trick that you will see um, in physics of 4C when we are dealing with the quantum mechanics on other fields that's heavy with differential equations. And uh, I thought it's uh, the method, mathematical method shortcut that we use there. It's um, perfectly simple enough to explain in like five minutes. So let me do that. It's, uh, um, it's uh, I guess, um, the way I would describe the technique is we are going to look for what's called separable solutions. And this is what I mean by separable solutions. So in this differential equation, we have function f as a function of position and time. And this is a quite general form of the function. Like it can be an infinite number of different things. And I'm going to suppose, hmm, what if I could write this into two different fun into a, a multivariable function of this form. Again, infinite number of them, but kind of a restricted <laughs> category of infinity. Um, a single function, let me call that capital G, of x only. And a single function of, well, let me call that capital H, of time only. And uh, I'm just Supposing, what if I have a solution that could be written in this form? Maybe there is none. <laughs> uh, maybe there is, but it's so useless. Like, if, you know, I'm, I'm just exploring. Like, okay, what if? So, okay, let me uh, try plugging this in into this uh, equation of motion. So I have a differential, the second order partial derivative on the left hand. And uh, on the right hand, I have a coefficient times second order partial derivative with respect to t. Let me plug in these two expressions, g as a function of position, h as a function of time. g as a function of position, h as a function of time. And here, the simple part of the partial derivative comes in because um, on the left-hand side, when I take this derivative, I can ignore h basically, it's a constant coefficient as far as this derivative is concerned. So I can rewrite left-hand side, something like, let me pull out h to the front so it doesn't get confused with derivative acting. So h multiplying to, and now that this is a function of single variable only, I can say, hmm, let me write it as an ordinary derivative of g with respect to position. That's equal to, 1 over v square, right hand side. Okay, I do, can do the same thing, pull g uh, out because it doesn't depend on time. It's constant as far as this operation is concerned. And as the derivative acts on h, hey, I can say that's an ordinary derivative because h is a single function of time only. So by considering separable solutions, I've rewritten my partial differential equation in terms of an ordinary differential equation. But um, if you're, as you stare at this, it might not give you any more hope because um, um, when I look at this function, uh, I can only have a one dependent variable. I have right now, uh, sorry, um, well, I, I can have only one dependent variable and 
only one independent variable. In this equation, in a single equation, I have two of each. <laughs> I have two dependent variables, g and h, and I have two independent variables, x and t. Like, we, we're not there yet, where we have a form of equation we can plug into our computer algebra system. And um, this is where this particular insight is useful. Let me um, do a bit of a simplification. I'm going to divide the whole thing by um, the function itself, 1 over g times h. I had a quantum mechanics professor, whenever he does some weird operation, he would say, oh, you can't stop me. And yeah, you can't stop me here as long as the g and h are not zero. And with this being function of and time, I can say, oh, I can always find the places where they are not zero. They are not zero everywhere. So I'm doing this operation for those places. So with that, left-hand side becomes uh, 1 over g, h is having canceled out, times um, ordinary derivative of g with respect to x is equal to 1 over v squared constant coefficient times g cancels out and 1 over h times uh, the, the um, ordinary derivative of h with respect to time. And this might not look all that different what you had above. Uh, let me rewrite it slightly. Uh, that might... Um, yeah, let me rewrite it into a standard form. 1 over g times um, this derivative, and I'm just moving this over, minus 1 over v squared, 1 over h times second order ordinary derivative is equal to 0. And this might not look any simpler but it has a property that the, um, the other form of equation didn't have. When you look at each of these terms, this, uh, this is a function of x only. And same deal here, when you look at this, this is a function of time only. And what that means is, Imagine um, having um, your setup uh, and somehow you made this work for some particular uh, value of x and t. Uh, you, this uh, quantity that you can work out numerically came out to be equal to this value so that, um, so that um, they are, when you take a difference, they add up to zero. The difference comes out to be zero. When you have that situation, imagine changing one of the two independent variables, just one of them, just x, for example. And as you change x, nothing on this side can change because this is a function of time only, which means if anything here changes as you change x, then this difference isn't going to work out to be zero anymore. So this has to be constant, just has to, even as a function of x. Now, g is a function of x, it's gonna change. And this part double derivative is a function of x, it's gonna change when you change x. But these two together will change in such a way that when you multiply them together, it's gonna be constant. Same thing here. This is going to be constant. And in fact, uh, because we have only these two terms, we can give a letter to this constant. Let's say this constant is letter E. It's a constant with respect to position and time. This uh, statement, mathematical statement, is something that you couldn't say up here when you had both x and t in a single term. Like you couldn't say that's constant because it's not. Um, but once you have separated out your variables, or, or your dependence on certain variables into one term, you can say that, and that has to add with other things in a way to give a constant value. Yeah, it has to be constant. So that's why this technique, I would call it 
looking for separable solutions. Not all solutions can be separated this way, but the specific form of a solution that I started by looking for, it can be separated this way. So once you've done that, then I can rewrite this into a series of differential equations. Let me just uh, do that for the term one and term two, one at a time. So for term one, I'm just gonna do this in my head and it's gonna be double derivative of G with respect to position is equal to the constant coefficient I was calling times uh, G is moved over G as a function of position. That's one equation. And the other equation will come from the right hand side equal to the same constant um, double time derivative of function h is equal to um, we'll be having moved things over 3 squared times e times h as a function of time. And both of these are, um, um, are, are the things you can um, are, are, are the uh, things you can solve in um, in in um, <laughs> sorry I'm getting tongue tied for some reason uh, are the things you can solve in a computer algebra system so let me just uh, demonstrate that he, within here we can at least come up with some form of a formal solution so and I, I was hoping to do an application of this to standing waves but um, I'll do it another time when I have a chance. Uh, there's a way to apply this to standing ways, but we'll do that later. Um, so let me just declare all the variables I'm using. I'm using variables uh, g, x, e. Uh, yeah, I think I'm fine using e. Uh, h, t, v. OK, those are my variables. Um, so my differential equation one will be uh, through, uh, with, I need to declare my functions. So G is a function of position and H is a function of time. Okay. My differential equation one is double position derivative of G is equal to E times G. Oh, it didn't print. Oh, let me just write them both. <laughs> 2 is equal to um, the double time derivative of h is equal to v squared times e times h. And then let me just have it print out the differential equation so that I can see that it's understood me correctly. Yeah, double derivative equal to that, double derivative equal to that. Okay, uh, let me do the dissolve. Um, so solution one is equal to dissolve. I'm never going to remember this syntax. Um, so help <laughs> dissolve. Uh, so that, uh, not dissolve, solve. Um, okay, so my differential equation, differential equation one, uh, dependent variable for that one, it was g. Uh, initial conditions, let me not specify them for now, and I won't do that this time. Um, independent variable of x. Okay, I think that's good. Now, when I do solution, it'll complain uh, because it's uh, the same thing that happened with the oscillate, simple harmonic oscillators. Uh, it needs to know the um, some um, constraint on the coefficient e. It'll give me different solutions depending on whether my constant coefficient is positive, negative, or zero. So let me just show that the solutions are different for those scenarios. So if I say, assume that E is positive, it'll give me one solution. Yeah, this is one set of solutions, some kind of an exponential thing. Uh, that doesn't sound oscillatory at all. <laughs> so I probably should assume E is negative. Um, oh, I need to make sure it forgets the previous assumption. Um, then, then yeah, now it gives a different set of solutions. It's giving you this, Kosh. Um, <laughs> we'll maybe deal with that later. It's something called a hyperbolic uh, cosine. 
And really, this combined with, they are taking square root of a negative number. This is going to give you an imaginary number. Imaginary number combined with this cosh and sinh, uh, it's going to give you cosine and sine. So it's going to be super simple, simpler than it looks right now. Uh, let me just try what happens if e is equal to 0. Uh, oh, wait. e is equal to 0. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, something, I guess it's giving us trivial solution, I think. Yeah. So, so you know, now you have a way to get a solution out of this uh, differential equation. Let me just uh, check with my uh, other differential equation. Uh, let's say, uh, uh, so I think I basically need a copy of that. And my solution two is going to be solution to differential equation to whose independent independent variable is h whose independent variable was time and print it so that i can see it oh yeah, yeah that's the trivial one uh, so let me say e is greater than zero uh, wait what oh um they also need to know the parameter of v i think yeah, somebody, so let me do it this way. Uh, I'm going to say, um, actually, I think I can do a separate assumption. Assume that V is positive. And that's always going to be the case. Uh, they, they are having issues with it, even though V is squared, because they are assuming V could be complex. Uh, so this will also make it also V is real. So it will solve that issue. So yeah, that's, uh, uh, so this is another that exponential answer. And if we assume is negative, then this also gives that. And uh, in the context of uh, standing waves, there are some things that we can do to kind of clean this up and get a solution for uh, standing wave or more precisely the conditions that you need for standing wave. Um, but we'll do that maybe another time. But this is an illustration of uh, using one of the mathematical techniques um, uh, for tackling a uh, partial differential equation. And um, I will tell you that this is one of the techniques and basically the only one I know because it's the only one I've needed to know. <laughs> I've stayed away from other situations where I need to solve more complicated partial differential equations. And um, oh, uh, one last thing. These are separable solutions. You might think, uh, so these are useless because they... Um, they only give us a class of solutions. It doesn't give us a general solution. Uh, I think there's a theorem problem somewhere where these separable solutions uh, form a, what's called the basis of the linear vector space of the solutions. And um, so any other arbitrary solution you might want, you can build it as a linear combination of the separable solutions. Uh, I'm sure there are limitations on when that applies. Uh, what I can tell you is that in the situations that we are, we physicists are interested in, they almost always apply. <laughs> so, uh, yeah.